Hey guys, welcome to The Gray State and this new little series that I'm calling The Rounds Up. So The Rounds Up, let's talk about that for a second. So if you guys are familiar with any of my bullet time stuff, you know that that's really limited to actually just clocking the velocity of the rounds and reporting it. So The Rounds Up is kind of built on that same idea. I'm gonna use everyday guns and uh, be looking at off-the-shelf factory ammunition. But the big difference is I'm gonna be going a lot deeper on the rounds themselves. I'm gonna be taking a look at the, the cartridge. I'm gonna be taking a look at the projectile. I'm gonna be taking a look at the speeds. Um, um, some accuracy and precision testing at a range that makes sense for the round. And then to round out the battery test, the third test, I'll actually pick something that's actually applicable to the round and what it was designed to do. You know, if it's a rifle cartridge, I'm going to be taking a look at its speed, its accuracy, and then also potentially anything like a third test would be um, if it's a hunting round or if it's a paper puncher or if it's a personal defense round and so forth. So that's basically it. I hope you guys find value in this series. I'd like some comments and feedback on it if you can. So in that spirit, today the round that I'm going to be taking a look at is a new for 2018 round from Hornady. It's their critical defense rifle. Okay, so let's talk about this round a little bit. First, this is the 55 grain version. It's got an FTX projectile that has a soft polymer tip in it. The uh, ballistic coefficient is nothing to write home about, but it's not meant to be. It's a personal defense round. It's a 0.175 ballistic coefficient. Um, it's got a published velocity of 3,240 feet per second at the muzzle, which is pretty smoking for a 223 Remington. So I'll be interested to see how this thing actually clocks. Other things to note about it, it's got a nickel plated brass cartridge so that aids in low light visibility if you need to do a chamber check or if you need to find the rounds. Um, and then the other thing specifically about the propellant is that Hornady has elected to use a specific uh, low flash propellant that's actually pretty quick. So they note on their site that it's a universal powder that's designed not only for 16 inch barreled carbines, but also shorter barreled AR pattern rifles like SBRs or AR pistols. So, Okay, so for today, the test, since this is actually a personal defense round, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do three tests today. So a la bullet time, we're gonna be doing 10 rounds downrange and uh, taking a look at the speed of it. The second thing we're gonna do is accuracy and precision and a little bit of a note on that. So today I'm gonna be doing five rounds and I'm not gonna be shooting at a long distance. I'm gonna be shooting at 25 yards. And it's not because I'm trying to skate out or anything like that. It's because this is a PD round and I'm trying to stay specific to what the design role of this round was. So I wanna see how it performs at 25 yards. I figure that's probably for the majority of the people who are gonna be using this as a personal defense round, a good range um, for, to take a look at it. So I'm gonna shoot from a prone position, which is admittedly a little bit different than you'd probably be using in a personal defense situation, but it'll give us a good stable base to see how what the consistency of this round looks like. And then a third test, of course, because this is a personal defense round, is I want to see how this thing actually expands. Now, Hornady says that this is an expanding round. Um, the old TAP FPD stuff was frangible rounds, um, and I have not seen anything on the literature on this round. Now, admittedly, it's also a little new, but even Hornady's own videos show these things expanding. Um, so I'm going to be taking it, putting it into some gel block, and seeing what the deal is on that. Okay, so that's basically what's on TAP for today. Let's get going. Okay, so the rifle for today is going to be the old trusty 16-inch barreled uh, DDM4V11 from Daniel Defense, and it's going to be clocked via a lab radar, and I've measured out my 25 yards for the accuracy portion of the test with the Leica rangefinder. Okay, guys, weather report. We had some storms come through last night, so it's still kind of overcast. Uh, temps are in the mid-low 70s, like around 73, 74 degrees, but the humidity is way high, like at 90%, and the uh, barometric pressure is kind of like around 29.9. So it's probably going to affect our speeds a little bit here, um, and I'm about 900 feet above sea level, so that gives you an idea of what to expect. With that being said, let's get started. Okay guys, here we go. This is going to be the Hornady Critical Defense Rifle 223, uh, published velocity of 3,240 feet per second uh, through a 16 inch barrel Daniel Defense. 10 rounds. Twenty-nine seventeen. Ugh. 2871 2879 
and I'm going to load one more in there to make up the one that didn't read. So get 10 shots. All right, here we go. Twenty-nine thirty-two. My guess, looking at where these rounds were hitting at 25 yards, um, that that one was maybe a flyer. It was out of range um, for what the radar needed to pick up in this short distance. So um, I went ahead and put, chambered that extra round in there, so we got our 10. Okay. Okay, guys. I just finished up the chrono test, which was test one, and I got to say, I'm kind of impressed. The conditions today are hot, muggy. Um, the pressure is kind of low. Um, so the speeds are going to be down a little bit, but we were still up, you know, in the 2900. So for a round that was probably tested with a 24 inch Sammy spec barrel, you know, seeing those rounds up around 2900, not so bad for something that was published at 3240. Now we're going to move on to accuracy and precision at 25 yards. Okay, guys, my apologies, but for some reason it looks like my GoPro didn't hold the battery charge. So I have it down there, but I don't know if it's going to last. So I do have... Um, I set the camera here so you can see me and see the target downrange and we'll go check them out after I shoot this. So it's going to be five rounds downrange of the uh, 180 critical defense rifle. All right, here we go. And also I'm going to be shooting for groups. We'll see here. Yeah, I'm shooting a little low on that target. We'll see here. No, not too bad. Uh, that was five rounds hole on hole. Now, granted, it was 25 yards. Clear. All right, let's go check it out. All right, guys, again, my apologies. So I think my GoPro kicked the bucket, or at least the battery died. So we're going to walk down here real quick. And I just shot five rounds of that Hornady Critical Defense rifle, which is a 55 grain FTX projectile. And I'm walking down here. And let's see, I'm pretty sure my GoPro battery did not hold out. And it didn't, unfortunately. But if you guys could believe this, That is five rounds, and I am not making this up. Okay, I'm gonna pull this target back and see if I can actually find the bullets in here because they're supposed to um, basically, you know, expand pretty quickly. All right, so let me pull this target back and see if I can't find all five rounds. Okay, so there's where they went in. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I've got five rounds right through this little hole right here and I am not seeing these things anywhere in here. well wait a minute what's that I might have found part of the jacket there let's see warm no oh, it's warm there's one of them it definitely expanded you can see the there's one of them oh. yeah they are all in here here's number two right behind where number one was oh. guys these are literally Hole on hole. Okay, guys, so let's recap on the accuracy and precision. Obviously, I was shooting for a group here. I was well within 100 yards where my normal zero is. So that's why we're seeing this. Um, we're not hitting the bulls. But anyways, you can see here, this is five shots in this group um, at 25 yards, which, by the way, is well within what you would be shooting in your home when you think of personal defense. Um, but if something if it was a little further out and you were outside of your home, you know, at 25 yards, 
um, you know, this is what you could expect out of this round. Out of a typical everyday gun um, with a 16-inch barrel um, like this Daniel Defense that I was using today. So anyways, pretty impressed with um, how this actually performed. And here you can see um, one round that I was able to recover out of a railroad tie after it went through a quarter of inch of plywood as well. So, okay, we're wrapping up this section and now we're gonna move on to the ballistic test and we're gonna use some FBI 10% gel. Okay, let's get going. Guys, I'm out at the range again um, for a day two with the Hornady Critical Defense Rifle because I was a bonehead and I forgot to charge my GoPros. So yesterday, if you remember the accuracy and precision part, the GoPros were no-goes and uh, I got to come back out here and redo this. So today we're going to be taking a look at part three of the series and this is going to be specifically regarding ballistic performance um, this is a personal defense round so yesterday i shot at 25 yards um, because it's not a match round it's not a paper puncher it's not a 100 yard performance round it's a personal defense round and so with that being said it makes perfect sense at the third test today it's going into ballistics gel so that's what we're going to do it's going to be same rifle 16 inch daniel defense i'm going to do two shots both shots are going to be at a distance of 10 feet per fbi protocol and I guess that's one other thing to note that this is not going into ordnance gel. This is going into 10% synthetic ballistic gel from Clear Ballistics. Um, I don't get any money from them or anything like that. I just want to put this out there. That's just what I'm using. And then the second test, I'm going to put four layers of denim in front of the gel before we crack that shot off um, and see how it actually performs with some denim in front of it. So that's the game plan for today. I'm really anxious to see how this performs, um, you know, because of the fact that these rounds were kind of ripping yesterday, especially for a 223 Remington. Hopefully they don't over penetrate. I'm going to put a second block behind it to capture them and these rounds just as a reminder these ftx's are supposed to be expanding rounds i haven't seen anything in the literature from hornady actually saying that they're a frangible round or anything like that so let's see how these things go all right let's hit it i'm at 10 feet here we go two shots uh first one into bear gel Wow, and look at this, it has actually stopped. This is amazing. It has stopped uh, approximately, uh, or it's a 16 inch block, so it stopped in eight inches and completely, completely unloaded all of its energy on the front end. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm actually gonna put four layers of denim in here and we're gonna go back the other way around. Four layers of denim, here we go. Wow, look at this. That is super, super cool. All right, I'm going to pack this up. So I'm going to actually get out of the range here because they're trying to set up for some uh, trap shooting. So I got to go home. I'm going to measure those. Um, and again, this was at 10 feet. It looks like uh, at first glance that the, uh, the one with the denim maybe had another inch of penetration. But overall, really, really, really cool stuff. Okay guys, I am back from the range here and uh, I did have to leave, they were gonna shoot some traps. So I apologize for this, but it's okay because it allows us to get and look at this in a little bit more detail. So just for frame of reference, so you guys know, I was running a 16 inch block um, and it's six, six inches high. 
my initial impressions uh, from when we were at the range was that even though this is a six inch block, I went back and I looked at the video and I guess that's one nice thing about having to go back and kind of read and look at the uh, details after the fact is I was able to look at the video. Um, you guys have already seen it. And that expansion on uh, the one with the denim, which is the one here on the left, I mean, it looked like there was about nine inches of a temporary cavity and we saw a little flash from the diesel, from the petroleum and the clear ballistics. So the discoloration there is from that little flash that went off. Um, but you can see here, you know, my general impressions are that this actually behaved a lot more like a frangible round rather than an expanding round. So um, I had some, I was kind of wondering, you know, there was a lot of similarities, especially in the velocity, um, the nickel cased uh, brass cartridges, um, the size of the projectile, a lot of different things. It, it looked a lot like the old Hornady tap FPD rounds, which of course were frangibles. And everything that I've seen on the literature for this Hornady critical defense is all about expansion. Now, maybe, you know, it's because I was at 10 feet, um, but all of the other, you know, the videos on Hornady and everything show this thing expanding. And the rounds that I pulled out of the wood were, um, there was a lot more lead um, that actually was lead on lead. And I'm wondering if it's only because I was going through this relatively the same hole, if it wasn't fragmenting the same and it was just piling it on in there, then that's what I was seeing. So it sparks a lot of interest. You know, I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts and comments on it as well. Okay, so let's take a look at these. So the first one on the right here, this was the one that was actually just into the bear gel. And the overall uh, depth, it looks like we're about eight and seven sixteenths of an inch. So you can see it was pretty much straight on in. It didn't travel a lot, it didn't veer off course. And if I look at it from the top, you can see here that the round actually stayed pretty straight as well. You can see all of the fragmentation that happened from the jacket. I'm gonna get a little closer here on this side too, so hopefully you can see it. But there was just a ton. You can see all the little bits of jacket in there. Um, the overall, and if I measure that, the overall spread of the fragmentation, I did have a piece that hit on the bottom of that case that I was using. So we're gonna call it four inches here and that was conservative. Um, the temporary cavity itself, the temporary wound channel is about two inches. Um, and it happens the expansion, the majority of it happened about one inch in, and then it continued for another one, two, three inches with the permanent wound cavity um, being approximately that four and seven sixteenths. So we've got that there. Now let's take a look at the side with the denim because I think this is the one that a lot of people like because it kind of validates whether or not this round can actually perform through layers of loose clothing. Um, and that's what it's designed to mimic, right? So if I take a look at it here, um, this is the denim that I shot. I don't know. I'm going to switch to a different camera. So my entry wound here, um, I'm actually at 0.151 on the entrance. And I'll flip through here and I'll show you guys what's happening. It's on the back side of the second layer. That's the entry here into the third. And then the fourth exit. Sorry for all the... Uh, <clears throat> and on this one... Starting to get some expansion already. I'm at 0.228 if I measure the exit on the fourth layer. So we're starting to get a little bit of expansion on the denim. Okay, let's keep looking at the gel now. The one inch over here, the performance is actually pretty darn close between the two. I actually get, if I'm being conservative, I get an inch and a quarter. Let me double check here. Actually, no, it's about an inch and an inch and an eighth. So about an extra eighth of an inch on the side with denim before um, it actually started to expand. And the overall length is about nine inches, nine and a quarter. So definitely I was, I was right. And my initial look at the, at the range, you know, it is just a little bit longer. So we got nine and a quarter here on the denim side, which is still, um, you know, well short of what the 12 to 14 inches is when you think of the FBI pistol qualification. Um, and if I look at the overall amount of fragmentation, I'm at about a little less actually. I'm about three and seven eighths of an inch over here. Um, again, the wound on top, I look at it here. You guys can see all of the fragmentation there. Um, pretty much a straight shot. I mean, the thing went as straight as an arrow in, and it was dead, I dead centered it right here. 
So you guys can see, it is just a nasty, nasty fragmenting round. Um, which leads me to think it, that it behaves a lot more like the TAP FPD. Okay, so now for the next part is I'm actually going to extract these, both the bullets and some of the fragments. We're going to try and weigh them um, both in total, and then I'm also going to weigh um, the main bullet that's left um, that went through the uh, permanent wound cavity. And then I'm also going to try and we're going to try and count and see how many fragmented bits we've got, um, and then and then we'll go from there. All right, so I'm going to stop the video and I'll come back once I've got this all extracted. It's going to take me a while. Is that a bucket of ice? Why no, it's what's left of the gel block after I completely dismantled it, pulling out for the better part of an hour, all of the pieces of those two rounds. So, uh, <laughs> all right, so let's dig into this a little bit deeper and I'll show you what I found. Um, so needless to say, what we just looked at, you know, the depths, you know, were pretty spectacular. It had fragmentation everywhere, but the thing about it is that's not really an expanding round in my mind. It's an explosive round. Um, so it does make me wonder, you know, it behaved a lot like a frangible round. Um, so is this a reboot of a TAP FPD? I don't know. We'll take a look at that here in a second because I, I actually have one close by. So let's take a look here and see what happens. So on the left here, we actually have the, um, I was able to try my best to, re re you know, reclaim all the pieces that went into uh, the bear gel. So this would have been shot one. I'm, and then over here on the right, this is shot two. This is what went through the denim. And I can say my general impressions um a lot more of it vaporized that it went into bear gel. Um, and I was able to reclaim a lot more of it that was actually, that went through denim. So I'm gonna do two things here. I'm gonna actually gonna measure the uh, the main projectile in both of them and see what kind of expansion we did have um, from what went and carried on to the depth of, you know, like nine inches, you know, or so between eight and nine inches for the two different rounds. And then we're gonna take a look and I'm gonna weigh um, what's left of the rounds that I was able to pull from each respective side. Okay, so first test. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to measure them and I'm going to go in shot order. Okay, so on the first one, this is the one that was, you know, went into bear gel. We're looking at about, well, isn't that clever? One point, you know, we have one, two, three, four. So we're at 12.34 millimeters, or if we want to look at it from a color, we're at 0.48. So just a little bit over twice the size of the 0.223 in expansion. So that's pretty good what's left, all right? And then when we get here in a second, we're gonna weigh that mean projectile too, and then we're gonna weigh him in total. So if I were to take a look at shot number two, which was through four layers of denim, a little less. So it expanded a little less, but we have bigger chunks over in that side too. So we're at 11.77 millimeters, or we'll call it 0.46 as far as caliber. So again, not too bad. Uh, the other one that went through bear gel expanded a little bit more. Um, all right, so now let's take a look at the weights. So we're gonna go in shot order. I'm gonna do two different, I'm actually gonna do four measurements here. I'm gonna do the main projectile that carried on um, in both, and then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna weigh them in total in mass together. So, all right, let's take a look at this. First projectile, as we pull it out, we are at 20.22 grains. That was bear gel. And we're gonna take a look at the second one here, which was through denim. 20.36, up oh, 20.4. So it retained just a little bit more, did not have the diameter of spread on there. So this one kind of stayed more a little, I guess you could say like a little bit of a ball shape, right? So there's more mass to it. All right, next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try and take up all these bits from each side, try and collect them here. And we'll do again, do them in shot order. All right, so I was able to reclaim, we'll call it 42.7 grains. You know, we're, we're a little, we lost about 20%. With that, there is just a ton of, as I was going through, lead that smeared within the gel too. So it was just non-recoverable. They were just too small to actually pick up. So um, I'm gonna be picking lead out of that out of that gel for the next, you know, I don't know how many times I recast it, hopefully to hang. So anyways, all right, now let's take a look at shot two, which I was able to reclaim a lot more. Um, and I gotta say, in general, the 
the fragments were a little bit larger on the side that went through bare denim, interestingly enough. Just an observation. We're at 42.7 before, right? Okay. So shot two was the was through four layers of denim, and we're at 47.42 grains. So quite a bit more um, as far as retention, in at least that I was able to recover. I mean, it's not that it, it's... I mean, this thing exploded, right? I mean... So I think it's safe to say that this round is definitely, I think expansion is used in the loosest of terms. And in fact, that the main projectile did um, expand, but the majority of the damage here inflicted, what makes it really gnarly is the fact that the explosion or the fact that it, was, it appears to be frangible from my experience. So that begs the question, is this just a reboot of the TAP FPD? Well, on a good note, is I just happen to have some TAP FPD in my bullet library. And so I went and pulled a couple rounds out and let's take a look at them here really quick. I think it's kind of interesting. Okay, so the first things to notice, I have the two rounds here, okay? And uh, the critical defense rifle, the new round is on top and the TAP FPD, which has now been discontinued, is on the bottom. They both share a lot of characteristics. They both have a nickel coated brass cartridge. Um, they're both considered, I would say we can call them both frangible rounds and on at this point, but there are some distinct differences. And when you actually line the cartridges up, you begin to see them in first. So there are some noticeable differences though. So one of the first things I noticed is that it looks like, well, the obvious one here is that we have a more aerodynamic uh, poly tip here versus a more blunt shape on the new Hornady Defense rifle. And the two things here is, of course, that's gonna make this round a little bit more aerodynamic than that round. Um, but what this round will provide is a blunt force. So if you guys ever shot like a blunt tip arrow or, I mean, just a slug, you know, it just, it's boot, it's a lot more, um, it's a lot more energy delivered all at once up front. It's catastrophic to the projectile. So with that being said, let's take a look. Um, I mean, I think that's, you know, those are the two biggest differences on face value um, are the, the elongation of the bullet here on the critical defense rifle and the more aerodynamic tip on the TAP FPD. Okay, now let's take these apart and take a look, a closer look at the actual bullets themselves. Okay guys, so I just highlighted what some of the external differences are when you look at the cartridge from the outside uh, between a critical defense rifle and a TAP FPD, um, both in 55 grain. Um, you know, the obvious ones being, you know, uh, the different shape of the bullets up, up you know, towards the tip. So um, given that, um, I really wanted to give some measurable differences between the two rounds as to why the critical defense rifle is not simply a reboot of the TAP FPD. And when I pulled the two projectiles out of the individual cases, I think it really shed some light on why the bullet, even though they're both frangible rounds, how they're going about it is a little bit different. And some of the trade-offs and the designs, um, when you look at the details, are also kind of interesting. Um, so we're going to take a look at that and kind of put some numbers behind it here for you number geeks um, who kind of like that kind of stuff. And we can turn some subjective you know, observations into objectionable facts. So um, I pulled the two uh, projectiles out of the individual cases. Um, unfortunately, I roasted the, uh, the much more aerodynamic tip out of the FPD when I was pulling it out with a pair of needle nose. Um, I still have the more blunt tip uh, polymag insert from the critical defense rifle intact here. Um, but for what we're going to look at right now, it really doesn't matter that much. So what I want to do is um, I've already kind of focused on what some of the similarities between the cartridges were. Um, and there's not a whole lot of difference when you actually think about the cases. But where the difference lies is in the actual round. Um, and right off the bat, there are a couple of key differences that you can see. Um, the first is, is that the critical defense rifle here is on top. It's actually a longer projectile than what the FPD was. So, you know, when you think about, you know, on external appearances, when you see that blunt tip on the critical defense rifle, you're immediately thinking it's more like a slug, which in a way it kind of is, but there's, there's some subtle nuances here that I want to point out. Um, so it is a longer, more slender projectile, um, so that it both stays, you know, so that they're both in at 55 grain weight. One of the other biggest differences here is the critical defense rifle is on the right. It's actually got a boat tail shape uh, to the projectile where the old TAP FPD has a flat base. That is a big difference. So when you think about, you know, the fact that, oh, wow, you know, it seems like those blunt tips on the new critical defense rifle 
are not nearly as aerodynamic. I think what it really does is it gives it a nice flat blunt platform to actually catastrophically deliver all of that energy up front. And that's what we saw in the gel, right? So when you look at it from this perspective, we see where they would be coming out of the shoulder together. So you can see here clearly, even though we would have a flat blunt tip on the critical defense rifle, we're already longer and a more slender shape overall to the, to the bullet itself. Um, so that's kind of a big difference. The other thing that I noticed too, when I was looking at these, and I don't know if you can see it here, but the actual cavity within the bullet in the hollow point itself is quite a bit different. Um, I don't know if you can see this here. Sorry about that. Uh, but this is the tap FPD here. I don't want to be playing the nutshell game So I'm gonna try and make sure I'm being as concise as possible in describing it and seeing what we're seeing But I don't know if the camera is gonna pick it up or not But you can see in the tap FPD here, which is the one on that left Is that the lead is actually drawn way further up into the tip right underneath the jacket where on the newer critical defense rifle It's a lot thinner right here. So basically what I'm kind of hypothesizing from this is the fact because of that now you actually have a crumple zone here with this jacket that will catastrophically fail much quicker than here where you're gonna get a little bit more penetration due to the fact that you've got more of that weight being pushed up front in the actual lead itself. So that's a big design change um, there in them. So if we were to do that, those are all observations I made, but just to kind of prove it out, I got my calipers here and very quickly, we're just gonna take some measurements. So you guys can see here, this is the boat tail. So this is going to be the critical defense rifle. And if I was to measure this out, we're at 18.01 millimeters. Hopefully you guys can see that in the camera. So we are at 18.01 millimeters for the critical defense rifle. And then here we're at 17.37 millimeters. So almost 0.4 millimeters or four tenths of a millimeter shorter of a projectile on the FPD. So it's going to be pushing that lead a little bit forward, um, which doesn't probably gives it a little bit more penetration, but it doesn't give it the expansion that we'd be looking for here, or at least the performance that we're seeing um, from the critical defense rifle. So clearly the critical defense rifle is a longer bullet than the TAP FPD. But the other area that I wanted to take a look at was the actual mouth. And I want to kind of validate that what I was seeing there is accurate as well. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to try and measure the inside of the actual tip of the hollow point. So here I'm at, yeah, I'm at 2.4 millimeters on the inside of the mouth for the critical defense rifle. Remember that 2.4, 2.39. And here I'm like at 2.21. So we're actually looking, you know, that this is in, in fact narrower. So that validates that as well. So those are some good numbers to think about. And when you think about how the rounds perform differently um, and what the design was and what some of the changes were, we can unequivocally say now, not only is it different looking on the outside, but we actually have the measurements, we pulled it out. And so that's basically it. Okay, so mystery solved. No, it's not a reboot. It's a completely different bullet. Um, and so there you go. Okay, so that covers up this portion. Now I want to wrap this thing up really quick. So. Let's get to that. Okay guys, I'm just gonna wrap this one up right here. It's already been way too long of a video. Um, but with that being said, we've just learned a ton about Hornady's new personal defense rifle rounds and in particular the critical defense rifle in 55 grain um, that this whole video was about. So. You know, just to recap very quickly for you in summary, uh, we started out with three tests, you know, for this episode of the rounds up. Uh, being that this is a personal defense round, I wanted to have three clear metrics of testing. I wanted to know the velocity. I wanted to know the accuracy and precision. And then I also wanted to know how this would perform in ballistic gel. Um, and we accomplished all three of those, those goals in this video. So the first one, just to kind of circle back and recap, um, Hornady publishes the velocity of this round, which is a 223 Remington at 3,240 feet per second. In my own personal experience, out of a 16-inch barreled rifle, um, I was able to arrive at 2,892 feet 
per second, which was an average across 10 shots. Um, and then in the second test, I moved on to accuracy and precision, and I was grouping, not so much for accuracy because of the fact that my scope wasn't zeroed in for this round, but um, very happy with the results. I was able to put five rounds hole on hole um, from 25 yards, which I figured would probably be the max distance realistically that you would be using this round um, in a personal defense capacity. And um, one other little thing there just to kind of recap too is, yes, I absolutely shot from the prone position, um, and that would not be realistic when you were, if you were to use this round for home defense. I totally get that. Um, and it wasn't really to cheat anything or make it look better than what it was, but what it did do is it quantifiably you know, validated the fact that it's a consistent round. Um, and by shooting from the prone position, what I did was I showed that it's not a, a limitation of the round if you don't have any, if you don't have accuracy or precision with it. It really goes back on the shooter to make sure that you're well trained. Um, and I accomplished that. Uh, the third test, which was probably, you know, you could say it was the most fun. I had the most fun doing it. Um, it was a lot of setup, but it was totally worth it, was I put two down the pipe um, into some 10% clear FBI gel from a distance of 10 feet. Um, and the results were pretty spectacular. I mean, the first one with bare gel went in, went in about nine, you know. Both of them went in somewhere between eight to nine inches, um, you know, just in summary. But the biggest thing that we learned in that testing was is that... Um, First of all, that this is a nasty, nasty, nasty little pill. Um, it's definitely not an expanding round in the truest sense um, when you think of something like, you know, a critical duty or a critical defense pistol round. Um, I'm just going to say it, it's a frangible round. Um, and it's absolutely sure to cause any destruction and pain um, in anything that's in its path. So um, when that test was completed, as so spectacular as that test was, what it also did was it caused me to question, is this round, now that we know that it's a frangible round and not an expanding round, just a rehash of the now discontinued TAP FPD? And luckily for me, I happen to have some, you know, still in my stash. So I pulled the two out and I did a comparison between the two. And, you know, while there are some similarities uh, between the rounds, you know, and I'm speaking of the, the critical defense rifle and then the discontinued TAP FPD, um, it's absolutely not a revamp. Um, of the old round of the TAP FPD. It's absolutely a new product. It's got different technologies um, and different geometry. So based on my limited testing, um, it really looks like Hornady's goal in this round was to piggyback on the success of the critical duty and critical defense pistol rounds. And my guess here is, you know, from what I saw in my testing is they're gonna, probably gonna have a bestseller um, even when their marketing was good, but now that I've actually tested it and validated um, it on my own, um, I went, you know, I stocked up and I bought a bunch, you know, I bought more boxes myself because um, it's a great round. I mean, it, it exceeded and it, it, it bested it in, in the tests that I had. Um, it beat my expectations. So, yeah, um, you know, take it for what it's worth. It's just my, you know, my individual testing on a limited basis. But, um, you know, I stocked up on it. So, <clears throat> I guess here in the final closing, I hope you guys enjoyed this and found this video informative and useful. Um, thanks for going down the rabbit hole with, with me on this one, especially when I started looking at the TAP FPD stuff. Um, it was my own curiosity. Um, I know it was way long and way longer than it, it started out in what I planned it to be. But hopefully, like me, you learned a lot and you enjoyed the ride and you got an inside look into a round much deeper than you would have if you just went and bought it and shot a couple of rounds. And, and if you did, then great. I mean, that was my goal, and that's why I do these things. It's basically just to share knowledge um, that I find, not that it's just coming off the top of my head, but we're, we're, we're uncovering it together. So um, please, if you have any questions or comments about the video or, you know, or feedback, um, be sure to leave it in the comment section. Um, if you like this video, um, I'd appreciate a like um, just for the effort that went into it or you know, maybe even a subscription. And it's kind of a little carrot you know, to hold out there in front. Um, before you guys ask that next question that I'm thinking I'm probably going to get, um, the answer is yes. And you'll definitely want to subscribe. So I did get a hold of a stash of the 73 grain versions, which are a little harder to get a hold of. And uh, I am planning on doing a video on that round very, very soon. Um, so be sure to subscribe to get notified when I push that one out. Um, if it's half as good as the uh, 55 grain, I'm sure you guys will want to see that one. So that's it. That's all I have. So until next time, stay safe.